All right, I, I have a word from the Lord tonight. If you give me 20 minutes, I, I can preach this, we can go home, God can move, and you can go home, eat, go to sleep, whatever it is you got to do for work in the morning. I know that this is ordained by God tonight because I wasn't scheduled to speak, but I'm here now, so. If you could turn in your Bibles to the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. And I'll be reading verses 1, then I'll drop him down to read verse 8 through 14. And the word of the Lord says, Now Naaman, captain of the hosts of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. Verse 8, and it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth, and he went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Farpar of rivers of Damascus better than all the rivers of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee to do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? How much rather than when he saith to thee, wash and be clean. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Tonight I bring you, how desperate are you? Elder Randy, would you please pray? Amen. You may be seated. Naaman was the captain of the host of the king of Syria's army. He was the military leader for one of the most powerful nations at that time. The Bible describes him as a great man, honorable, and a mighty man. He was the commander. He was highly regarded and victorious. Here's a man who had power, prestige, and position. He was successful. He was a winner. He was respected. He was admired. But a three-letter conjunction. But. But he was a leper. He had all of his accomplishments. He had he could admire all that he had done up to that point. His great position, his wealth, Yet, every time he saw himself, all of that vanished. There was something now that defined his life. Something unwanted. He was a leper. He was a leper, and there was nothing that he could do about it. To understand just how terrible this would have been, you have to understand leprosy. Leprosy was the most feared disease at that time. Lepers were isolated and humiliated. They were the outcasts. They were the untouchables. Leprosy was extremely contagious, and many times the end result was death. How could this happen, though? How could this happen to Naaman? Naaman is powerful. He's the captain of the host. This can't, this, this, it can't happen to him. It's Naaman. His life can't be defined by this awful disease. He's a great man. How can he be marred by this? Something had to be done. Could anything be done? You see, that's when desperation starts to kick in. When you're tired of the way that life is going and you've had enough, it's then 
that you lose all inhibitions. When you're desperate, you don't care what anybody else thinks. When you're desperate, you don't care what anybody else says. You'll go places you normally wouldn't go. You'll, go, you'll travel to a distant country to see some prophet. You'll do things you normally wouldn't do. You'll do desperate things. You see, when you're truly desperate, you'll go and dip yourself in a river seven times. When you're truly desperate, you won't care how foolish you look. All you care about is your miracle. You see, when we get ourselves out of the way and actually become desperate enough to allow God to do the work, He will do more than you ever could imagine. Listen, that's Bible. The Bible says that after Naaman came out of the river that seventh time, his flesh was as the flesh of a little child. Think about it. Naaman, he would have had sores, gross, cankerous sores all over his body. I know, gross mental picture, sorry. But when God healed him, he didn't stop there. After he came out of the water, there were no sores, there were no scars, there was no trace of leprosy left. But God went a step further. When he came out, his flesh was like the flesh of a little child. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask. You see, when God does it, he doesn't just do it halfway, he does it all the way. He does it to where it's not, to where it was never even there. Hallelujah. I want to talk for a second about positive desperation. Maybe a little difficult to accept, you know. Desperation is when you're at your wit's end. How is that positive? But sometimes desperation is the best thing that can happen to us. You see, at desperation, that's when we come to an end of ourselves. When you come to the end of yourself, that's when you give it all to God. Like I said, when desperation takes over, you'll do things you normally wouldn't do. When desperation takes over, you'll throw your hands up in the air and say, God, God, I need you. I can't do this all on my own. I am all out of options. I have nowhere left to turn. But at the same time, that's also when the devil starts to speak into your ear. It's at this time that the devil starts to lie to you. He sees you at your lowest point. He'll tell you something like, if you dip yourself in that river seven times, everybody's going to think you're crazy. What's he doing? He will try to convince you that it's not worth it. He'll try to convince you to give up. The devil tries to tell you that God is not there for you. Brother Thomas already said it. The devil is a liar. God is there for you. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. He is always on time. I know because I'm still here. I know because he's never left my side. You don't get it. I've been through the fire. I've been through trials. I've been through the ringer. God is still there. God has never left my side. He's always been right by by my side. If God be for you, who can be against you? God just wants us to totally give ourselves to him. He wants you to give him your everything. Everything he wants, everything that you have, he wants you to give to him. He wants you to completely give your health to him. He wants you to completely give your finances to him. He wants you to completely give your salvation to him. Listen, God isn't some ogre with a, with a big club ready to strike everybody down. 
He wants you to have a bright future. He wants you to have a full life. He wants you to have peace. He wants you to have prosperity. He wants you to have good health. How desperate are you to receive the things that God has for you? You see, God, he wants to break the bonds of captivity in your life and set you free. He wants to pull you out of the miry clay and set you on a rock to stay. He wants you to have beauty for ashes. He wants you to have joy for your mourning. He wants to restore your shattered dreams. Church, he wants you to have it all. Every blessing, every promise, he wants for you. But we have to give him something first. We, he, we have to give him our everything. The definition of desperation. A state of despair, typically one that results in rash or extreme behavior. Oh, Webster's about to preach for me up in here. <laughs> Church, how desperate are you? How desperate are you? I'm not up here preaching this to get you to say amen. I'm not up here preaching this to get you to clap your hands. I'm not up here preaching this for theatrics. The reason why I'm preaching this tonight is because God wants someone in this house to get desperate about their situation. God wants someone to show him, them just how much you want it. How desperate are you for a healing? How desperate are you for financial stability? How desperate are you for a move of God? God is here. He's here to do what he promised he would do. He's here to give you everything that you deserve. He's here to turn your world upside down. But he wants to see just how much you want it. Church, it's time for us to get desperate in this house. Hallelujah. Can we give a hand clap of praise to the Lord right now? There's an American dessert. This dessert comes in a silver collared wrapper with a polar bear on it. It's a vanilla ice cream square covered in a thin layer of chocolate. The maker of this dessert came up with a commercial in 1983. They asked the question, what would you do for a Klondike bar? With the premise that people are willing to do just about anything for a Klondike bar. You see, over the years, for Klondike Bar, people have made monkey sounds, sang and became I'm a Little Teapot, <laughs> NASCAR drivers have driven pedal cars around the track, men have become good, have become good listeners for five minutes, and husbands will hang out with their mother-in-laws. All for a Klondike bar. For that chocolatey coated ice cream, loaded big and thick, no room for a stick. People are willing to do just about anything. Just like those who are desperate for a Klondike bar, how desperate are you for your situation? What are you willing to do to receive a touch from the Almighty? What are you willing to do to be forever changed? What are you willing to do to be made whole? Are you willing to be like Zacchaeus? Who climbed to the top of a sycamore tree just to see Jesus. Just to see him. From that moment forward, he became forever changed. Are you willing to be like Bartimaeus? The blind man on the Jericho road. Who cried, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Even when people told him to shut up, he cried louder. You see, if you want a true touch, you're going to have to ruffle somebody's feathers a little bit. But who cares because it's your need. His cry led his sight to being restored. Are you willing to be like the men in Capernaum? Who brought a man that was sick of the palsy. 
They were bringing him to Jesus. The crowd was so large. Jesus was in a house, and the crowd was so large around the house, they couldn't get him near Jesus. So they came up with a plan. They climbed to the top of the house, tore a hole in the roof, and lowered the man down inside. To get your touch, you're going to have to work for it. To get your touch, you're going to have to fight through some crowds. That man walked out of that house. Are you willing to be like Jarius, who was risking his reputation of the religious community to save his dying daughter? See, on the way to the house, he is told, your daughter is dead. Not everyone is going to believe your miracle. Not everyone has the same faith that you do. Some will say that your miracle is dead. His daughter, Jesus raised up his daughter. And how about the woman with the issue of blood? She had to fight just to be able to get close to the hem of his garment. You know, she had to be thinking, if I could just touch him, if I could just touch Jesus, if I could touch something that's touching Jesus, if I could just receive a touch from Jesus, she walked away made whole. How desperate are you? Are you willing to be like these, other, these people that I just mentioned that didn't care what anybody else thought? They didn't care about the looks they would receive? They didn't care what someone was going to say about them. The only thing that they needed was a touch from Jesus. The only thing that they cared about was getting a touch from the almighty God himself. You see, they didn't know it, was going to, it wasn't going to be easy. They didn't know they were going to have to fight for it. They didn't know they were going to have to think outside of the box. The only thing they knew... The only thing they knew was that if they could get to Jesus, they could get a touch. Because when they, if they knew that they could get to Jesus, he is the one who saves. They knew that Jesus is the one who heals. They knew that Jesus is the one who delivers. They knew that Jesus is the one who overcomes. They knew that Jesus had all power. It's in the name of Jesus that the supernatural happens. How desperate are you, church? If the musicians could please come. If we could all go ahead and stand in this house. There comes a time in your life when you have to make a choice. You have to choose, am I going to accept my, accept my condition? Am I going to accept the cards I was dealt? Am I going to just accept my lot in life? Or are you going to say, I'm tired of being sick. I'm tired of being broke. I'm tired of the things I'm praying for not happening. I'm tired of things not going my way. I'm tired of the status quo. How desperate are you to change it? How desperate are you for that miracle? You see... Every single person that I mentioned got tired. They were tired of their situation, and they did something about it. You see, their desperation became victory. Does anybody in this house want victory tonight? You want to be set free from your, from your captors? It can start right now. Someone in this house who's desperate for change in their life, Needs to make their way to this altar as quick as they can. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, I praise your name, God. Oh, hallelujah. We're desperate for your touch, God. Someone in this house needs to find themselves at the altar right now. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? He's, God is here right now to give you it all. Everything that you need, he's here right now. Hallelujah, Jesus.
Let's all lift our hands in this place. We praise your name, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship your name. Touch us in this house, Lord God. Let your power fall in this place, God. Touch your people right now, Lord God. There's more than just these that are up here right now. If you really want to touch from God, make your way to this altar right now. In the name of Jesus.